Okay, Patricia, are you gonna find that video? Hey, well, go over there and grab the link. And I can it. grab the link to that, yeah. So I link. just moved over here. Okay, so today we're gonna talk about downsizing with family history in mind. Um, why, why would we do that? Well, there's a lot of situations, usually disaster will force you to downsize and lose stuff. Um, so really you want to downsize to be preventative, um, divorce, <laughs> we have to divide up people's assets from a divorce, um, death, that's a big one, um, moves, either because you've lost your job or maybe you have a um, need to downsize from one house to another house. Maybe we've downsized a bunch when we've moved cross country and we didn't want to haul everything. What that was one? always my plan is, is sell everything when you're going to move. <laughs> I mean, like all your furniture and stuff and uh, buy new furniture when you get to your new place. So, for instance, I think our bed is about the only thing that we've really moved from house to house. Our, our, our bed and our genealogy. Yeah. But like our dressers, our couches, washers and dryers. We have a few dishes from our when we first got married. Actually, yeah. that I had before I married you. Kitchen tables. Pretty much. We just sell it. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, downsizing right now. Good job, Cosmos Slice. That's great. So you're gonna have lots of questions, so you make sure you drop them in. So those are some of the reasons why we downsize. Another reason why we can downsize is because, you can leave it right there. Okay. Downsize is because um, you inherited something. So I had a neighbor um, who woke up one morning having a dream of me. And I'm like, okay. So she called me and she said, you're the person. I need to talk to. That's what it said in my dream. I don't know about you, but that was a little weird. She said, I have inherited stuff from my husband's family, from sisters, uncles, brothers, you know, ex-wife two times removed, whatever. And then of course she had her size. Everybody just thinks she's a dumping ground. Um, and she said, you gotta help me figure this out. And I said, you know what? Why you're, I'm on your brain is because I just wrote this book, Downsizing with Family History in Mind. It was published that day. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. So she had a lot of fantastic questions and I understand the pain. I understand the pain. So let's go ahead and talk about four principles of downsizing. I'm gonna go to the first principle and then I'm gonna Go grab something real quick. Okay, he's gonna he's leaving me. This is not good. Ah! All right, so we're gonna talk about the four principles of downsizing with family history in mind. Because a lot of decluttering shows are only about reducing your stuff so you can fit into a particular space. We're gonna talk about how do we do that and preserve our family history. So the first thing we have to do is reduce. And you think, uh, well, that's obvious, but the reduce is just your first attempt to um, get things decreased and really it deals with boxes. Most decluttering and downsizing shows have the wrong boxes. They say what? Keep, sell, and what? Right? They say keep, sell, and donate. But that's wrong because whenever you've watched any of those shows, people will bring all their stuff at the front line, they'll divide it into the three piles, and which pile is the biggest? the keep pile, always. They really can't reduce anything. They may have something in sell, in a sale pile and they may have something in the giveaway, but they still struggle. And the reason they struggle is sentimental value, the stuff where family history is. So we're gonna talk about um, reducing, but we want to also preserve our family history. I've had this experience before that after I tried to reduce things, there was stuff, he's like, why are you still keeping this? Why are you still keeping this? Well, I don't know if any of you have ever seen Homecoming Mums from Houston. I mean, from, from Texas. M-U-M. So Chrysanthemum Mums. They're really big flowers and they're decorated with ribbons and then they have lots of ribbons they hang down and then, then you start attaching cowbells and um, jingle bells and the noisier the better. Yeah, and Andy's gonna go and pull up a screen share of that. Um, and he's like, why are you still holding on to this? And, and it's because I couldn't, I didn't do the second step, which was preserve. And that means to take pictures of it. But there's probably many of you who are like, I may have objects, but what about the papers? I can't let go of these papers. They have value. We're gonna need them someday. 
So the second principle is how do you preserve stuff? Because then you go in the third step, which is reclaim, which is a second round of reducing and reclaiming the space in your home by making sure you organize everything both digitally and physically, and then finally end up by showcasing your family history. I'm now, showing them lots of pictures of moms. Are you? I don't think so, because that's You're the right. live stream. <laughs> Now I'm showing you pictures of moms. Yeah, these are those moms. I mean, yeah, they're pretty ridiculous. Now these are really, really, really ridiculous. But, you know, there's some. I mean, I like this one, the Texas one. That's awesome. There was a girl in my brother's high school where she uh, was in a marching band and she played the guitar. I know, right? A guitar player in a marching band. So she's playing the guitar. And one of the freshmen in the marching band that didn't play well enough to be a part of the marching band, they're the alternates. They had to push around her, um, what are those speaker thingies that, that make the guitar sound come out? An I guess amplifier? they're speaker. Yeah, amplifier, that's the word. They had to push it around. <laughs> anyway, so she had a top hat because she did, couldn't wear it on your uniform and, and all this other stuff. So she had a top hat and the mom was on the back of her head and it made it easy because you could take it off and put it on desk. But I digress, in any case. Um, but we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the things that you need to know um, for downsizing. So let's go to tip number one. So tip number one is you need to know how much time you have. There are many archivists like Melissa Barker, the archive lady who's going to come join us in two weeks to talk about archiving. But, um, and they will tell you the best things to do for archiving. However, if you only have an hour, I know, shocking, an hour to downsize something, you can't do archive quality um, downsizing, preservation, reclaiming, and showcasing. Um, many of you may think, well, who would only have an hour? So when my mom passed away, um, we were living in Iowa, and um, I flew on a plane back from to Houston. She lived in an apartment, and it was like the end of the month. <laughs> so if somebody dies, what does that apartment person want to do? Wants to clear it out so they can resell it. So during the middle of planning the funeral, making those arrangements, and doing all that jazz, visiting with family, this, that, or the other, I only had an hour at an apartment to grab whatever I could grab. And so I needed strategies to make sure I preserve the most stuff. And so the first thing you have to figure out is how much time do you have? The longer you have, the better off you are. So if you're not planning to downsize anytime soon, start implementing some of these strategies now. So you would just kind of think of like a 12 month plan. So the first thing you need to know is time. And then you need an action plan. So tell me in chat, who of you, how many of you absolutely know how to downsize, right? You, you just start downsizing and you know everything you're supposed to do, right? Of course. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. See, what I do for downsizing is I just rearrange furniture. And that's what, I, growing up, cleaning to me was just rearranging furniture. Because then you actually had to, you know, pick everything up and sort everything and put it back away. And so... Uh, However, for, for downsizing, just rearranging the furniture doesn't work because you've still got all the same stuff. It's just in a different location now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, if you just try to do, I'm going to downsize on a Saturday morning. Yeah, you're not going to get very far because then you're going to go and you're going to pick up something. And you're going to go, oh, I remember this. This was my favorite. It hung in this hall and I really liked that dress. But can you believe it? I didn't like dresses later. And you'll just go through all of your memorabilia and you're going to be stopped short because you're going to be dealing with sentimental value, sentimental overload. Um, and sometimes many, I, so whenever we have a task, I freak out at the beginning. And at the end, depending on the task, I'm better at the end because I, I, I check things off. So we climbed Mount Tai. Mm -hmm. How many? 9,000 steps? Something like that. A ridiculous amount of steps. And we were slow Americans compared to all these really fast Asians. And they kept telling me to add gas. <laughs> so cute. At the beginning of the... He's like, yeah, we could do it. We could do it. And I'm like, I, I don't think so. But as we got to the top, I'm like, okay, okay. We can do this. And this is pre-surgery, so my leg was still working. We can do this. We can. And he kept going like, are you sure you don't want to stop? <laughs> so the idea with an action plan is when you know what steps to take, 
you can check them off and it makes it not seem so overwhelming. So first you need time. You need to know how much time you have. And then you need an action plan commiserate with that time. <laughs> and then you need some guidelines. And this is the part that gets really hard for some genealogists. I have a girlfriend and she's not watching. So I'm gonna pick on her, but she, she's not watching. Anyway, she has a room that looks like a library. And I'm thinking her poor family, they have no idea which of the things in here are worth keeping and which can go somewhere else and what can go in the oh, trash. Shh. I did say the T word. You did? The, I did the trash. And if there, if her family is anything like my husband and his brothers, when they told their mother to downsize, what are you, what are they going to do? Well, we said if uh, if she didn't get it organized and figure out what this stuff is, then when she died, we were going to take it out back, light a match, and just burn it all. And we were dead serious. Absolutely, and that's going to be the family bibles, the pictures of Civil War veterans, the stuff from Sweden and Norway that go back and connect you into the Vikings. I know Sweden and Norway do not both have Vikings, but... Yeah, they do. They do? Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Holland. Do they have Vikings? No, that's where Amsterdam is. See? Okay, see? Yay. <laughs> Score me. I did know. Okay, I did. I did. Anyway. But you get the idea. They're going to burn everything, <laughs> the good stuff and the junk. So, you need some guidelines. And some of them have to be really harsh. And they're harsher when you have a shorter timeline. And they're more robust when you don't. And so then finally you need to preserve. And you will find out that when you can preserve stuff, then you can let it go. So that those mums, I don't have it in my house anymore. I had the mum as a picture. And it once I have once I have the desire, I have the time, like sometime to make my high school scrapbook again, I'll put the pictures in there. I haven't you put quite your mom done it yet. In here at all? No, no, that no, was all pageant stuff. So. I thought you might have had a mom picture. No, no. I stayed on topic. Oh you told God. me to stay on topic. Okay. I did. You're gonna find out about what we're talking about here in a minute. It's really distracting. Anyway, so you you wanna preserve. And preserving is not just digitizing photos, but it's digitizing documents, digitizing and photographing artifacts. Um, the one big mistake I did when I told my mom I really didn't want anything from your house is I didn't, I didn't want the thing from her house, but I really wish I would have taken time to take pictures of her salt and pepper, um, collection, her, um, teddy bear collection. She had bears everywhere. I wish I would have taken pictures of those because I really wanted the memories, but I certainly didn't want the stuff. That was her stuff, but it would remind me of her, if that makes sense. And so you need to preserve both the photos and papers that we as genealogists and family historians think about, but the objects and the items in our home. The last thing you wanna do, and this is a true story, I have a girlfriend who moves this eight foot by, how wide is that? I don't know, this, this foot, <laughs> you can't see. How wide is that? About four feet. Okay, so an eight foot by four foot chest of drawers made of hardwood, like old hardwood from like the 1830s, we're gonna say. It had crossed the plains in the United States and then it just keeps moving with family members. But I asked her, I was like, so who did that belong to? And she's like, oh, a relative. Oh, which one? I don't know. Do you know the story behind it? It's theirs and you keep moving it. If we don't preserve the stories behind the artifact, Okay, so I think we are back. I'm not sure. Um, in the chat section, if you could just say whether we are here or not. We just had a power failure. And now we're trying to see if uh, the site is working. And right now, I'm trying to get back into YouTube to see if it's actually working or not. So, dun dun dun! Okay, so I see that we're connected on everything. YouTube just died? I'm trying to get back into YouTube. Okay. Okay. I think we're getting back in now. Hold on a second.
because it looks like we're streaming here. It says that we're still live. Let's go to the control room. <laughs> okay, it looks like we are still streaming, I think. Okay, Serena says, sounds good, picture's not. Okay. Okay. Coming back now? Maybe? Press the public view? Or is that? No. No, not that. Uh, pop out the chat. Okay. Maybe. Yes. Yes. Chris okay. says yes. Woo. <laughs> Good sound of picture. All right. <laughs> we were just sitting here. There's no. There's no bad weather outside or anything. Just Nothing. all of a sudden the power went out, which brings me to a just quick story. Yes, for sure. So we lived in Iowa for seven years. And in Iowa, um, you know, they have lots of snowstorms, lots of ice storms. In fact, we moved there just about a month after they just had like a two week out power outage where, you know, the whole city was out of power for two weeks from this massive ice storm. So for the seven years that we lived in Iowa, I think we had the power go out once. Yeah, I think you're right. Once. Oh, I can see better. This includes during the flooding that was there. This includes during all the harsh winters that were there. The power went out once. Um, and then we moved to Texas. And in the first month here in Houston and Texas, I think we had the power go out at least four times. Oh, and the AC decided to die. And the but AC that's a decided to story. die, yeah. Anyway. But anyway, and it's usually a power outage down here about once every two months or so. Um, Normally not for very long, but sometimes. Okay. Check that. But. And the picture break. Okay, so we're going to keep going. So I was talking about preserving. Um, I don't know where he stopped. So we're just going to kind of go on. <laughs> so yeah, so your streams may be coming back. Some of you may have been saying something about a blurry stream. Um, it may be coming back now. You might try to go to the, the uh, higher, um, what do you call it, resolution. I need my slides. Oh, just a second here. <laughs> you got your slides. There we go. All right. So I asked some people. Um, I figured, so my book has those action plans. It's based on, um, those action plans are based on, and what do you do if you only have an hour? What if you, what do you do if you only have a weekend? What do you do if you only have three months and the one if you do if you have six to 12 months or more? So the action plans, you're going to find them in, in the book. Um, as far as um, the guidelines, the guidelines are going to be in the book as well. In addition to having some cheat sheets. So let's say you want to just rip them out at the back or there's going to be a bonus link in the book where you can print off copies so you don't have to rip up your book. Um, and then you can paste them on the wall to help yourself or if you're working with others, you can have your cheat sheets that tell you what to keep, what to toss, where to take things, depending on how much time you have, um, and give you these guiding principles. But I also thought it would be really good, really to take time to answer some of your questions. So we're gonna start with some questions that were pre-sent to me, and then I want you to take some time um, to throw in some questions that you think of, like what do I do with this? What do I do with that? And then if you disagree with me and anything, you can also put that in the chat later and we'll get to it. So the first question I received was from Marcy and it said, what is the best scanning process to use to decrease the clutter? Now, what's the best scanning process? Well, part of it is you need to be organized and you also need to reduce before you scan. If you have, now Patricia or somebody was talking about photos, do not scan blurry photos that you're never gonna keep. Why keep passing on that clutter? Do not pass on overexposed images. Don't don't create digital clutter is what you're saying. Exactly. So reduce before you digitize. And then prioritize prioritize the things that you that matter most to you. The rest of this stuff can be given new homes. So let's say, in my book I talk about creating a surname table, and I actually have a video about creating surname tables. But on that surname table, you highlight the surnames you most want to curate, and everybody else is going to be going to new homes. So if you are gonna be scanning stuff, you should only be scanning stuff that matter to you. Um, so for me, let me give you for instance. And if you're a clay ball or a comfort, it doesn't mean I don't love you. 
but I'm not particularly interested in researching the clay balls and the comforts because there's lots of researchers out there. But if your last name is Geisler, Tenopel, Hopi, Carlsberger, Townsend, Town Lee, I'm very interested in those lines. So I'm gonna keep stuff that pertains to those lines and I'm not even going to bother with digitizing, organizing, or whatnot with everybody else. So I'm gonna have the best of the best as much as possible. Now, if you have a deteriorating um, like death certificate or marriage certificate, it's still the best because it's an original, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, best of the best doesn't always mean it's the most pristine quality. It just means it has, it's unique, it's highly sentimental, and it's original wherever possible. You're not gonna keep copies of census records. They're online, so get rid of that. Um, so once you have the best of the best in that category, for the names you care about the most, then for photos, I like to organize things um, according to color first. So your sepia or se sepia, however, sepia. sepia. Sepia together, your black and white together, and your color photos together. Because one, when you scan it on a flatbed scanner, the scanner likes you better. <laughs> it doesn't like mixed and matches. And I like to scan and batch processes. And then, um, let's see, what's the last tip? So scan and batches, stand, scan and color, and then work through your way through your documents. So we'll, we'll leave it there. More tips are on our blog as well as in our book. All right, the next one. In the middle of this process, trying to organize the memorabilia my mother had from both sides of my family to pass down somehow to my parents' 11 grandchildren and their future descendants, trying to find the best way to preserve, organize photos, certificates, and memorabilia. Okay, the best answer is get my book. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Grab your scrapbook and show. Okay. Oh, um, so what do you want me to show? Uh, oh. That you can put pictures and the memorabilia and the documents uh -huh. in the book. Yeah, for sure. You can put pictures, um, certificates, memorabilia in the book. And if you make a digital scrapbook, you can make multiple copies. And then the question decreases is who needs to have the most original. Now, I was telling a girlfriend of mine, um, my neighbor who dreamt about me. Um, yeah. So, and some of the pictures are just so old, so old color pictures. You try your best to color correct, but you know, some of the history is the fact that they're theta funny pictures. But anyway, um, sometimes the best repository for the things you have is not in anybody's home. So my friend has these letters that um, her father wrote to her, his family when he was on a mission. Well, there are archives that collect letters, they're missionary letters. So she can, you know, scan those pictures so everybody has a copy, but then the physical version of those letters then go to the archive, and that's the, actually the best place to preserve it. So, And I think Cosmic Slice in the notes here, before we decided to have the power outage, <laughs> I think it was right before he says, I've been digitizing original documents and donating the docs to local history organizations and libraries along with genealogical charts. So Absolutely. he still has a copy of that, a digital copy, but then the originals are with some group that's going to better be able to preserve those. She. Sorry, Cosmic Slice. I think it's a she. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just realize some, um, divide, you are probably going to be dividing up your collection. That's just what, that's the plain and simple. There's very few people who want everything. Um, but I know a lot of family feuds end when you do the photographing and scanning the pictures because that's really what people want. Very few people want the actual object. Um, so it, if you start prior, um, digitizing and then putting things in archives, then everybody has access to it. Next. Is that the same one? No, this okay. one. Um, so I have old photos from multiple family branches, scrapbooks, new paper, clipping, just getting them all digitized is overwhelming. Um, organizing those files is just as insane. So again, don't bother with surnames that you don't care about so much. If you're going to give them to another family member and you don't have a lot of time or you feel overwhelmed, then bless them with the stuff and make it their problem. 
<laughs> Otherwise, then one other thing is outsource. Outsource some of the digitizing. And why not ask for Christmas presents or ask people to donate? You know, this is your family. This is their history. If they don't want it digitized and you're overwhelmed, then ask them to help you pay for outsourcing. We, we digitize all, or sorry, we digitize. We outsource all of our shredding to our littlest kids. Well, they love it. Right. Well, and so there might be some things like scanning photos. Mm -hmm. You know what? Some little kid might find that super interesting. And you'd be surprised. My um, my fourth child, she got really good at scanning. Yeah. And she so did a really good job. Don't, don't uh, think that, hey, just because they're six years old or seven years old, mm -hmm. they can't be a help. Um, some of these prods or processes that take a long time because there's just hundreds and hundreds of photos. Mm -hmm. Well, one, these little kids, they might not have seen any of these photos. And so they're going to look at them while they're scanning them. And they like scanning them. Mm -hmm. And uh, now you can get that part done. So For sure. think about using other people in that way. Or there's also services like Photos, Movies, and More, Legacy Box. Um, those are two that come. Larson Digital and Tom Perry from Extreme Jeans, the Multimedia Center, TMC place. All right, the next one. So tired of lugging around to eight. Uh, 10 18 gallon totes oh my goodness gracious journal journals photo items certificates letters blah, blah blah how do you choose what to keep is there a way to preserve it electronically without ending up stranded several years so on and so forth so again it goes back to you need to first reduce what are the stuff that you most want to be the curator for and realize that family history is a team sport not everybody likes to climb a family tree, but some people will be happy to help you digitize things or and so on and so forth. But if you ever have something in a, of an abandoned family line, find an archive. Melissa Barker, the archive lady, she will tell you, find an archive. There, um, Many of them will be glad uh, to take your stuff, but call them before you do. And in two weeks when we're talking with her, she'll tell you, all about that. We'll go over exactly as far as donating an archive, what people need to do, mm -hmm. what kinds of things archives will take, and how to find an archive that might take something that you have. All right. Are there any quick questions there before we go on? Because I want to make sure you live folks have an opportunity to have your questions answered. Okay. So I got to go back before the <laughs> okay. before the power outage. Um, <laughs> well, here's some, here's some different advice that some people had said. Mm -hmm. So Chris had said, hey, just sort out what you need when we're talking about downsizing. Sure. Um, Stacy says, last summer I had to move and purge a lot of things. So even though we moved to a bigger house, though my dad left a lot of stuff in the house we moved into. Right, for sure. So yeah, especially if you're, if you're changing family members' houses or, or moving into somebody, mm -hmm. some other family member's house, recognize that yeah, it might be a big house, but there may not be as much room there available to you as what you had. Right. So Andy's mom, um, <clears throat> she has a doll cabinet with all these crazy dolls. Before she left to, um, she's on a mission with her husband, um, she took pictures of all of the dolls. So what she's doing now is she's writing the story behind all of the dolls so that when she's ready to give the dolls to her granddaughters and others, she can break None up that collection. None of her sons want the dolls. Yeah, no, they don't. I don't want their dolls either. I know I'm so, so bad. But what I do want is when she gets back, we're going to work on taking those pictures and the stories, putting them together in just like a photo book. It doesn't have to be a fancy scrapbook, but it's going to have the picture and the story and we'll always have that collection even though she starts dividing things up. But that's like special to her. She's going to spend time on that. She's not going to do it for everything she's received. Uh, Serenia says, we just throw out anything we haven't used in a year or more. Um, but I will keep all the genealogy boxes. Yeah, I wouldn't keep all the genealogy boxes. So if you get our book, there's these cheat sheets that tells you what in those genealogy boxes are worth keeping. You will be surprised that now that we have online um, genealogy, which you should always have a backup of your tree online because in disaster happens, happens, fires, floods, hurricanes, and so forth. Um, but a lot of that paper can be disposed of, and then you can just keep the genealogy gold. All right, so Cosmic Slife says, it's like peeling an onion. Getting rid of stuff reveals more stuff. And dust. And dust. <laughs> lots and lots of dust. Uh -huh. But uh, Cerny also has a question here. Mm -hmm. My mother has a family Bible with lots of names in it. But I do have photos of all of those names. Is that sufficient for archiving, even if the Bible does get trashed? Okay. So here's what I've learned about family Bibles. If the family, family Bible is moldy you, and you have pictures, then get rid of it. 
if it has critters and varmints and other things, then you need to get rid of it. Now, the family Bible can be put into an archival quality box, and that there are a lot of archives who'd be interested in keeping that Bible. And then you have the digital version. You've taken a picture of those names. You can use that everywhere else and then create a citation, just a simple, the actual Bible is in this archive for people to go track down if they actually want to see it. But then it's preserved and it's not being touched and manhandled anymore. But that's what I would suggest. And which archive... Um, Right now, what I've been told is where is the family primarily from? So if they're primarily from um, Lincoln County, Ontario, Canada, you're going to look for an archive there. Yeah. Um, so My nose. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> but this is part of me being sick. So Cosmic Slice asks, you talk about digital scrapbooking in your book. Is there a good program to use for that? So preserving preserving some of your, your memories, both the pictures and the the documents. Um, scrapbooking is a great way to do that because mm -hmm. you can also share that for with sure. other people. In fact, we've done that for some years where mm -hmm. we created a scrapbook for ourselves and then basically made a copy of that scrapbook for the parents or the grandparents yeah. um, on that. So the question is, do, do I cover it in the downsizing book? I mention it and the importance of it. Um, but I have two books. <laughs> One's called Power Scrapbooking. Getting caught, well, it used to be called Power Scrapbooking getting caught up no matter your style but the newest version really focuses on doing it digitally because it is the fastest way to scrapbook um that's available on amazon power scrapbooking by devin noelle and then the other book is called family history scrapbooking and uh simplified and that's how it teaches you how to tell a story with your scrapbooks, especially when it's about an ancestor. So you make a book per ancestor. So those are two books that I would recommend. Just go over to Amazon.com, um, type in Devin Noel, Lee, N-O-E-L, make sure you put that in there, Lee, and then you're gonna find family history, all of our books actually. Um, but we have a special deal we're gonna tell you about in a little bit. Um, so and then the program, program. The program, all right. so. I personally use Photoshop Elements because I like to have control over what goes on my page. I often, so, but my alternative is if you're new to scrapbooking, if you just want to do speed, then use Mixed Book, type this in, Mixed Book, M-I-X-B-O-K, -okay, Mixed Book, or Shutterfly. I like both of those services. You can use their drag and drop to create books. They also have autofill. The only thing I don't like about them is it makes it really hard to have enough space for writing. So you're gonna have to find some of their drag and drop layouts that has plenty of space for your writing. Um, but like with the photo book that we're gonna do for your mom, um, they do have layouts where one side is a picture and one side is text. And then that's really easy to do there. Um, but if you find that you don't have enough space for writing, then I use Photoshop Elements. And it doesn't matter what version you have, as long as you have 11 or later. Uh, I don't think they're in like 18, I don't know. No, actually, excuse me, it's not 11 or later. I mean, you could do 11. That's what I used to have, then I upgraded it to Photoshop Elements um, 2018. And the reason why I like that is because you, it also makes quick slideshows. Like, it's the only service I found out there where you can just drag and drop the pictures and they'll auto curate the stuff and it's really, really great. Uh -huh. Most stuff you have to like place every single image and a lot of times it's just one image, but in uh, but they don't have a lot of themes, which is kind of stink. I want like a lot more so they don't have like 15 years of the same theme. <laughs> but Photoshop Elements 2018 or 2019 or 2020, whichever they're on, one of those will work. Now here's my frugal tip of the day. Get it during Black Friday. It's the cheapest of the year. They so, always have it on sale, Black Friday. Thanksgiving weekend. Thanksgiving weekend, Photoshop Elements, knock yourself out. All right. Now, one other thing with, with uh, you know, that's that's great for taking pictures of stuff and preserving stuff like your photos and your documents and everything. <laughs> other mementos or other objects sometimes are big and bulky. And so... I inherited from my grandfather a pair of skis. Yeah, I was hoping you were going to talk about this. And so, you know, skis are like seven feet long or whatever, um, big and thin. And we inherited them when we lived in New York. And so they moved with us from New York to Iowa and then moved again from Iowa to Texas. And they just sat in the garage gathering dust, um, doing nothing. 
And uh, at one time in Iowa, I was thinking, hey, maybe I can make like a little toboggan thing for the kids with these skis. But I never got around to it. So the skis just sat there. And here in Texas, after a few years, I was like, you know, this is just cluttering up the garage. I don't ski. Um, they're, they're wooden skis. And so nobody uses them. There's much better types of skis now. And so I was thinking, maybe I'll go and donate these to one of these restaurants that has, you know, different things on the wall. And uh, I thought that was a great idea and uh, just never got around to it. Well, then this, this uh, summer, I was at Boy Scout camp with uh, my son. And one of the classes that they had was on pen turning, making pens out of wood. And uh, so I went and I took that class. Um, it was just a short class. It doesn't take very long. And uh, after I was like, wow, this is actually pretty fun, pretty easy to do. I bet you I could do this. When I got back home, I saw the skis in my garage. And I went over two of them and I'm looking at the size of them I'm like, you know what? There's probably enough wood out of these skis to make pens for all of my grandfather's descendants. And uh, so I measured up and uh, talked with my wife and, and basically to buy the tools, the lathe and the woodworking tools and the pen kits to make these pens costs roughly about what we would spend with on our family for Christmas. And so what I am doing, you'll have to show that there, is what I is am that? making these wood pens for my grandfather's two daughters and for the eight grandkids, uh, making I think 40 pens total, um, five pens for everybody or four pens for everybody, and different things. And so now, instead of these skis just sitting in my garage doing nothing, everybody is going to have a piece of these skis of my grandfather. And so that's, you know, taking a piece of family history and now we're preserving it in another way. Because mm -hmm. now these, these pens, well, each family, is, they're probably going to pass those pens on or lose them. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, be able to pass those pens on and it's created another piece of family history and a story to go with it. But you know what, what else he's doing is you're making boxes. Yes. So you're stepping up the value. Yes. So now, now well, here's, here's what's cool about the boxes I'm making. So my grandfather, he was a carpenter, um, you know, built houses and stuff. So I decided I'm just going to make these boxes out of two by four or two by six lumber. That's it. It's not going to be, you know, something super special, but it's going to be something that he used every day of his working life. Mm -hmm. um, and so people are going to have, the family members are going to have a gift that is made from something that he enjoyed doing as a pastime, as well as made from something that he worked with all his life. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, lots of people are loving it. They said it's a brilliant gift, and uh, there's a reason why you love to get around all that time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, um, yes, Greg Clark mentioned that I needed to be careful and say American Thanksgiving. So I do apologize. Um, so for everybody worldwide, I, um, I don't know, does Norway and Sweden get to take advantage of our Black That's Friday? That's a good question. So Black Friday is the... Um, day, the Friday after the fourth Thursday of November, right? Yeah. <laughs> the Friday after the fourth Thursday of November. Mm -hmm. So it's the fourth. No, it's not necessarily the fourth oh. Friday because it could be the fifth Friday. But anyway, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, okay. it's usually like the last Friday of, of, uh, of November. Right. And that's when like all the big sales in, in the United States for Christmas are. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure since each, each country has their own yeah, websites. Sure. Um, that might be a time where you can get a great deal mm -hmm. or, or might not be. I'm not sure. Awesome. Um, and then uh, I think Cosmic Slice, was it you who said that uh, oh, there is Cyber Monday for sure? Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So they've taken those, but they've left Thanksgiving with us. There you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. But I think uh, Cosmic Slice says she works at uh, Best Buy. She, she can get Photoshop elements. They like the tip of getting Photoshop elements for cheap. Absolutely. But think, the one thing about getting Photoshop Elements, it's two things I like about it. One, YouTube has so many tutorials on there about how to use, and I do have some videos on how to do scrapbooking with Photoshop Elements. So there are so many videos on YouTube to teach you how to use that program, which is one of the reasons why I switched to that from another program I used. Um, the other thing is you don't have to buy the upgrade every year. Uh, 
I only upgraded from 2011. I could still be using 2011 right now. Um, the only reason why I upgraded is because they had that quick slideshow maker and I'm behind on created our, creating our family videos. Um, so that was really, really helpful. So I upgraded, but you can hang on to that program. So get it for, for cheaper and then hang on to it for a while and you really get so much money. You'll get your value out of it. Yeah. All right. So for our